Okay, and here we are once again showing up on our remote dual playmats. Who is gonna take it and be the first finalist? Is it gonna be Schattenspiele trying to go for a back-to-back -back win? Or can Lithium claim the crown for himself? The die roll is happening right now. I think it's a 12 from Lithium. I think so. Good stuff, good stuff, yeah. <laughs> Virtual handshake, just what you want to see, and now we are gonna jump into action. Let's see if we can start things going. One of the most scary cards has to be the Vanities in his deck. Yeah, so. we have seen uh, how scary the, the Vanities fiend is for the for the for the Dragon League matchup. So if Lydium uh, can put up it immediately in the very first turn, we will see a lot of problems. Um, Let's see, now considering his options, uh, maybe if he opened uh, some cool cards like key cards such as Pantheism or one for wow, one. Wow, this again. one for one is just uh, cursed for uh, his opponents. It's the fourth time that uh, this one for one is the opening card uh, from Lithium. And he even discards the Erebus, which is just the dream opening uh, of the deck. Yeah, this is what you're really looking for for your very first turn. And uh, this means you at least have one normal summon. So Lithium can, is actually considering his options. And maybe we, could, we can see uh, a Vanity Sphere coming or a Majesty Sphere. Um, as we can say now, all he needs is uh, his opponent not to have a response. Uh, oh, he has the impermanence. He, yeah, so the impermanence here, uh, shutting down the there. Uh, Luckily for him, though, he did not normal summon. If he was to normal summon the idea, then the impermanence would avert even more. But now he's gonna activate the Erebus discarding Pantheism. Wow. What an opening from uh, Lithium. <laughs> this is incredibly good because, on one hand, he can get the tenacity if he doesn't still have it. And with the Erebus, he can get rid of one of Schattenspieler cards, which is very good. And on the other hand, I think he can also get the Domain of the Monarch uh, later on. Thanks to the Erebus. So, yeah, not only that, since uh, he didn't use the first effect of Pantheism, uh, what can happen here is uh, he tributes uh, the idea, and then he gets back the Pantheism, and it can activate it in the same turn. So uh, this is looking absolutely fantastic from Lithium. Uh, we could see a domain here. Uh, if he were to get a domain, uh, he can reduce the level of Erebus and just uh, get things going. Uh, it is the most straightforward play to me, and yeah, this is what's uh, going on, so... Maybe at this point I expect Schattenspear to have any, uh, another hand trap, because he used the impermanence directly uh, on uh, Edea. Uh, so maybe he has an Ash Blossom or another impermanence as well. I mean, it could be reasonable, because uh, uh, like he decided to, to activate it immediately on Edea. Okay, here comes the... Ooh, wow. but instead it's the Vanity Fiend. This is what Schattenspieler was absolutely terrified to be looking at. Uh, it is uh, what's gonna uh, probably put uh, an end uh, potentially to this game already. It's uh, absolutely scary to be facing. Uh, there are very few outs uh, uh, in the game itself, uh, and especially in a deck like that. Not only, he already used a copy of the Impermanence. Which is the natural out in his deck. Yeah, I mean, if he doesn't have another copy here, uh, Shatter Spirit is in trouble. Because at this point, Lidium uh, can also use the, the other Pantheism to get through two fresh cards out of his deck. But let's remind you guys that he also has uh, Erebus in his head. So now he was able to get back the Pantheism that was banished because that was sent to the grid. Yeah, uh, this might be all. And yeah, it is. So Shatter Spila. Uh, needs to draw an out, uh, uh, potentially the second impermanence in his deck, uh, but definitely gonna be tough. Uh, and I think, uh, as wow. we can see, uh, it, it is uh, very tough to deal with it. And uh, he's only having to set a monster and pass, which is great news for Lithium. If he picks up any uh, Monarch spell and trap, he can activate the Pantheism and then activate the Erebus, uh, which would pretty much seal the game. Wow. Okay, Idos comes down, Very good car here. allowing him to have an additional summon, and thanks to Domain, he can go and summon the Erebus now. Things are looking very good for Lidium, he couldn't ask for more. This is what the dex uh, looks like when you draw the nuts, let's say. And uh, now uh, what uh, can happen is uh, 
since he's playing the one copy of the Mark of the Monarchs, uh, that uh, would be game ending. Because if you get the March down, it protects uh, vanities uh, from being targeted, and you cannot use the impermanence anymore on uh, on it. So. He's now shuffling back one card with the Airbus, so Schattenspieler uh, is just putting the card back into the deck. And uh, wow, once again Lidium is showing us how powerful this deck still is in 2020. Yeah, absolutely. Incredible show from him. Uh, uh, quite consistent. One for one has to be one of uh, the best cards uh, that is helping him achieve this this weekend. But. Uh, let's see if he can get uh, his hands on the March of the Monarchs. I think that's the key card uh, to complete the puzzle that would shut down uh, Schattenspieler entirely. Yeah, at this point uh, is what you're really look looking for. Because uh, you are uh, pretty much done. You have the Vanity Sphere and you have the Airbus, you have the Domain of the Monarch. So you really need to close things up as soon as you, you can. Because uh, you never know, your opponent could draw maybe an impermanent. So yeah. As expected, uh, this is his goal. He reveals the March of the Monarchs. He knows that that's the only way that he can potentially lose this game. So very uh, nice recognition here by Steven. Let's see now what Schattenspieler picks. Because maybe uh, he could pick the Tenacity. And maybe Steven doesn't have uh, any uh, yeah. target in his hand. But, uh... Let's say if he has uh, another monarch and he can activate the tenacity, this uh, should be uh, pretty much over. He does. He has another copy of Erebus, uh, so he's gonna be able to search naturally from his deck the March of the Monarchs, uh, uh, denying uh, Schattenspieler uh, the option of top decking uh, a second impermanence. And uh, at the moment, Lithium uh, still looking very good. Uh, there's not that much the Schattenspieler can do. Uh, Lithium put up a huge field with all the good cards he has. Yeah, and now with the march down, they cannot be destroyed or targeted by card effects. Uh, uh, absolutely uh, terrible position to be in if you're shot in Spila. What's the face down gonna be? Uh, nothing to Remler. Is the parlor Dragon Maid the main attack in uh, shot in uh, deck? Yeah, Schattenspieler still doesn't want to scoop because he knows that the, the Monarch deck to, takes quite a while to deal 8,000 uh, damage life points, but uh, maybe if he doesn't pick up any good cards in the next draw, maybe we will soon see a game too. So, is it gonna be uh, Lithium who advances uh, and is the first one uh, to have, uh, let's say, a match point? Uh, uh, since uh, nowadays, while we are talking, we have uh, some tennis action uh, from all over the world happening. It is, so Steven takes it home and he is the winner of the first game. Now, uh, the pressure is entirely on uh, Schattenspieler. So, very well played uh, by uh, Steven, recognizing that the win condition was the Vanity Fiend. First of all, his priority was to get it on the field. And once that was accomplished, is is which to protecting the card. Uh, absolutely wonderful stuff. And now we just move to the side decks. So uh, I don't think that he expected to be playing against Monarchs. But what do you think uh, he can do? Well, uh, considering the situation, he once again can side in the Arpis Feeder Duster because it's very powerful against uh, uh, Monarch. And also, I mean. At this point, you can't afford to, to go second because uh, otherwise you risk your own. So you cannot side in the Pancratops. Yeah. I mean, I would side in the Arpis Feeder Duster anyway, even if you go first, because you really want to have some kind of solution if you're I mean, in trouble. You probably can side the, the engine, which we have been uh, talking about uh, from uh, tomorrow uh, and yesterday, which is the smoke uh, grenade of the thief. Uh, if he opens that card, he can uh, assure the. Uh, Steven doesn't have an out uh, for his board, uh, but yeah, outside of that, I don't think he is signing in many cards. You probably can switch a few entrops, uh, like Nibiru, which is completely useless uh, for a Drone and Lock. Uh, Drone and Lock, uh, useful against uh, very few cards, but if you chain it uh, once Pantheism uh, is done, you can prevent uh, the second part of it uh, from activating, so maybe that's a card uh, we, we are gonna see. 
And uh, we have seen Lidium sitting in this position uh, two times this weekend. So we know that uh, he already knows how to play against the Dragon Link deck by going second as well. So I expect him to be ready enough for this game too. Now it's going to be tough for Shatterspiller because the first uh, this is the first game that he dropped the whole weekend. Yeah, so your pick uh, uh, for the entire win uh, for the first time, I gotta say, the in the entire weekend is struggling. So he needs to win two games in a row if he wants to keep uh, his uh, crown uh, of remote dual champion. And it's crazy as we have discussed uh, a lot during these days how very old cards still are here and uh, I'm really happy that Steven decided to play his favorite deck but uh, as you guys can see, I mean Monarch is still more than a, you know, funny deck. <laughs> Like, he's still beating all the players. Yeah, not only... I mean, you would expect uh, maybe Steven to put up a good fight uh, and then maybe lose uh, or like lose 2-1, but instead he's just uh, going through the competition and he's now one game away from uh, advancing to the finals. So, uh, action is gonna start uh, from uh, Schattenspieler with the quick uh, uh, launch, it seems. Yeah, it looks like uh, Schattenspieler will go for the standard juggling combo we have seen a lot of times during this weekend. And uh, we know that uh, Steven doesn't play any hand traps at all in the in the main deck, so maybe he's added in some. Yeah, so this is pretty much what we have seen. Uh, we talked to how brave uh, Steven's decision have been uh, in the his deck build. Uh, in particular, because the only entraps he has in his side deck uh, are the Nibirus. And as we can uh, see in the card I like now, Schattenspieler sided in uh, the copy of Violent Cube. Uh, very interesting card which you can summon with the Christian uh, Fibrax, uh, since it's a tuner. And when it's used for the Synchro Summon of a Lion Monster, you get to add the Smoke Grenade from your deck. So, a very cute uh, interaction. And uh, it might come up uh, and in this game. So, yeah, luckily we're going to see this play uh, by Schattenspieler because uh, he has free access to all the resources. And uh, as you can see, he's playing uh, fa as fast as he can. Yeah, definitely doesn't uh, want uh, to lose uh, the game uh, like we saw yesterday with uh, Lorenzo and other players like Zoe uh, in time. Uh, he knows uh, and he probably watched uh, the old stream, so he wants to play as fast as possible just to avoid uh, uh, losing like that in game 3. Because we do know that Monarch is uh, incredible at actually uh, playing in time and protecting their life points. Yeah, it's incredibly difficult to play with Monarch uh, when, it, when the time is up. And as predicted, uh, we do see the uh, combo with the Violent Cube and the Smoke Grenade. Uh, so very well played uh, by Shot and Spieler. We are now going to be able to take a look at Steven End once uh, the combo is done. And uh, by having the Herald on the field, the only possible end trap, Nibiru, uh, is also shut down. So, seems like he knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, not a surprise. This has been uh, pretty much the same uh, ever since the last Remote Duel Invitational 2. Yeah, pretty much uh, most of the players decided to rely on the Dragon Link deck. Uh, I mean, we have seen it uh, being played by most of the players today. And uh, it's completely understandable because uh, you have a lot of resources and uh, you actually abuse of your extra deck. So... Yeah, so it's uh, good stuff here from uh, Shot and Spila. Um, the ending goal uh, is definitely not what we have seen uh, previously. Uh, so the extra deck lock. Uh, uh, Lithium does not play with an extra deck uh, since he's using Domain. Uh, and instead, uh, uh, the goal, as we know, is a Smoke Grenade, Levianir, so getting rid of two cards from your opponent, and then probably use uh, Steal the Savage as a negation. Okay, he also discards the Lancia, which means that uh, he doesn't really need to have uh, one copy of Lancia in his hand. By the moment, that is going to put up a lot of, a lot of interruptions and uh, he will go also for the small grenade later on. Interesting uh, side deck choice, by the way. It's probably there just to prevent uh, uh, the Pantheism, a second effect. 
uh, because during your turn you cannot use it, otherwise it would work wonderfully against the other two. So that's pretty much uh, the, the combo we have seen a lot of times this weekend. But as you said, we will not see the extra deck a lot because... Uh... No, 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 it doesn't make uh, much sense. <laughs> so you can see here the Geradic Spheres uh, uh, coming down, uh, which means the Smoke Grenade uh, is going to be the last one because we saw with Matteo, you need to be careful playing uh, Rocket Tracer because uh, there is a restriction with only summoning Dark Monsters for, for the rest of the turn. So usually that's the last uh, card you activate. And that's going to be the case here. So we now finally get to see uh, the Smoke Grenade in action for the first time. Very interesting choice for Schattenspieler, who decided to play, play it in the side deck. So that whenever he goes first, he can get full access to the card and uh, can look up at uh, Steven's end, so... Yeah, so now we... Ooh, there is double um, evenly matched, though, and the Pantheism, so the end from uh, Steven is actually incredible. Uh, it's uh, it's very tough to decide uh, what to get rid of. Um, on one end, you might discard an evenly to then uh, negate the second copy, but it's very tough. Uh, uh, this uh, could not be over. Maybe there is a chance that with the top deck, uh, Steven still finds a way to win the game. Yeah, this game is far from over, because uh, I think at this point you maybe want to get rid of uh, the evenly matched. Okay, oh, okay. He gets rid of the Stormfort, because okay. uh, he will put up the Savage Dragon, so he has double negation on the field. I do like uh, this line. It is risky, though, uh, just because your opponent can top deck uh, any Monarch uh, spell and trap and still activate the Pantheism. Uh, and uh, force uh, your board with the evenlies. So he's gonna definitely try his best to stay uh, alive. And we do know that uh, they are both really putting up a good fight. Yeah, so we couldn't ask for more. This match is looking incredibly good. Both players showing us how powerful the, their decks are. Yeah, and now even the Levinir comes down. So it makes sense the shot and speeder uh, discarded the Stormforth just because he's gonna get rid of yet another card from uh, Lithium End. So the chance uh, that it is an evenly match is actually a 50 50. So, a very nice uh, move here. And uh, I mean, it's still possible. What do you think uh, Lithium needs to top deck uh, for this game to be still in his uh, contention? So if Lidio top decks, for example, one Monarchar, it would be good, but it's really up to what uh, Trattenspieler shuffled back in this time, in this point. Because uh, if uh, uh, Steven has double copy of Evilly Match, of course Trattenspieler can get both of them with Herald and the Savage Dragon. And then he would be left only with one card, which could be either uh, Adder or uh, the Pantheism. So right now it's really up to, uh, to, to what uh, Steven draws. Yeah, so even the Union Carrier, uh, but yeah, exactly. So I was about to say, we, we talked about the restriction from uh, using only Dark Monsters. Uh, so uh, making sure he doesn't uh, miss anything is going to just use instead the second effect of Striker to get back a Tracer for a next turn, if there is even going to be one. And now the pressure is entirely on Steven. Can he pull off a Miracle? and just top deck uh, uh, an out or the rabbit, let's say, out of his cylinder? Or is it gonna be 1-1 one, one, uh, and we are gonna advance to game 3? Few moments away from finding out. Uh, let's see what the draw is from Steven. So we might see a battle phase coming. Because uh, if Schattenspieler didn't hit uh, one copy of the Evilly matched, I think St Steven has to activate both of them and just, uh, you know, See how the situation goes, but um, yeah, not pretty, not pretty. Not yeah. pretty. Uh, it definitely needs to pick up uh, uh, a monarch card, depending what he sent back. The best way to do it is uh, hope that the adder was knight and then top deck uh, a monarch uh, spell and trap, I would say, so that you can use the pantheism and the double evenly to try and stay in this. Okay, as predicted, the first evenly match comes down. Uh, gonna be negated by uh, one of uh, Schatten's pillar card, the Herald, to be uh, exact. And as opposed, Steven here has the second copy, maybe. 
Okay, and now we get to see why Schattenspieler is playing the one copy of Sauravis. Uh, not only is it an end trap that can protect your monsters, but you can search it once the Herald eats uh, the graveyard, because uh, Herald, just like it was played in Necrots, uh, allows you to search for a, a ritual monster from the deck. Okay, so now Steven moved into uh, Memphis 2. Which means that uh, Shattenspieler hit one of the evenly matched that, that Steven has previously. And Steven drew another copy of Pantheism. Nice. That he discarded. Uh... So, okay, now it comes the Savage Dragon. And yeah, has, uh, only the, uh, the Adder, thing but... is now he knows that the, the last card in his hand uh, is the Adder. Uh, and uh, there is not that much that you can do with uh, the reminder of his cards. Yeah, I think uh, Lithium, uh, knowing uh, very well the Monarch deck, uh, will soon realize that there is not much he can do. Yeah. He picks up his cards, so we are going to see Game 3 for one last time uh, for one of these two guys. It's one against one, uh, and it's uh, the last uh, to decide them all. So we still have 19 minutes left, a uh, bunch of time. Maybe we are not even going to reach uh, the timeout. Uh, and... Uh, I think uh, the the pressure has to be on Schattenspieler now, if we see something similar from Game 1 especially. Yeah, also because uh, we have seen uh, Lithium having a lot of times 1 for 1, which helped him uh, a lot during this weekend. And uh, he showed us that uh, if this deck goes first, it's very difficult to, to come back. Uh, once again, we have a Game 3, which is going to be very interesting, also because uh, now Schattenspieler Paul said in, uh, once again, the as we said before, the Arpice Feeder Duster. I think he yeah, was said in for, for sure. sure. And uh, what do you think about John Lockbird? Uh, I mean, uh, we saw that he already sided in uh, Artifact Lancia. And I think it makes a lot of sense to just side the Drawn Lock and Lancia. Even though they are pretty weak, uh, he has a lot of cards that he needs to side out. Uh, like the extra deck lock uh, and all of those uh, uh, Nibirus uh, and Entrops that are less uh, usable. But I do think uh, uh, the free Kaijus have a lot more priority. They are perfect against Majesty, and they are just really good to deal with uh, the domain. So Kaijus uh, are going to come in, uh, and once again, it is going to be on Steven uh, to convince us all uh, that his Monarch deck has what it takes to win it all. His goal is going to be once again to summon uh, Vanity's Fiend or just a lot of uh, Tribute Summon monsters protected by March uh, and Domain. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's definitely going to be close. Uh, it can be either of uh, these guys' games. So. Yeah, Vanity Fiend by far the MVP of uh, Lithium deck in this weekend. And uh, we were fortunate, uh, I gotta say, because uh, maybe some of you guys didn't were, weren't so familiar with the Monarch deck. So maybe you will actually think about playing in for this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I can bet that a lot of people were just disregarding uh, uh, Lithium just because uh, they thought it was bringing a fourth fun deck, the deck that, as he said, he has been familiar with for years. But now uh, he's proving everyone wrong. He's just one game away from making it to the finals. So there are just going to be the five last cards for one of these guys. Who is gonna make it? Is it gonna be Schattenspieler? Is it gonna be Lithium? We are gonna find out soon in the last game three for the first top four match today. Well, I think Schattenspieler really wants to win this one because uh, he is the, the reigning champion and I don't think he wants to give up that easily. Uh, on the other hand, I think that uh, this is an incredible chance for Lithium because uh, not only this is his uh, favorite deck, but he actually. Showing everybody that he could do this one this time. So, one more time, let's take a look at these opening ends. We want to see once more uh, Pantheism, Tenacity, all of the draw cards from uh, Lithium, uh, followed up by one of the Fiends. Nice virtual handshake to end it all. Uh, and let's see, the pressure is now on Steven. Can he get his hands on yet another one for one or idea? That's definitely one of the best starters of his uh, entire deck. Let's see what he does. Uh, quite curious to see his first move. Okay. Okay, it's uh, one of the best ones. It is Pantheism, uh, discarding the Stormforth. 
And right now he really needs to pick up some uh, cards uh, to normal summon, but he first activates the Vantasm from the graveyard, which allows him to search uh, out of our uh, Monarch card. Yeah, arguably the best card, uh, if not one of the best spells in the deck. Uh, uh, Lithium told us uh, in the interview yesterday that he was extremely excited uh, when in the latest Forbidden Unlimited list the card came back to free copies. And uh, he's showing us all uh, why uh, it is such a powerhouse. So he does have a monster. So Majesty Fiend. Okay, that's a pretty good one, to be honest. This could be very interesting because we have seen, I think, only one time uh, Lithium putting up a Majesty Fiend on the field. Yeah. We have seen uh, most of the time Bandit's Fiend being played. But uh, the thing is that you can activate the Tenacity. Oh, he gets the. the wow, monster. this is uh, very interesting. Uh, he adds a Pantheism with Tenacity. So that could mean that he already has access to all of his uh, engine cards. Um, definitely not what you would expect, uh, since he already activated a copy this turn. So, as you can see here, Pantheism, just the key card of the deck. And now he's uh, gonna try and activate it again, but... I'm. Was it not yeah, this I, turn, I, or we're just gonna quickly check it? Absolutely. So what uh, he wants to do in the meantime... Well, in the meantime, uh, he's just going through his deck, picking up two other cards. And uh, we are sure that we can only use the second effect only once per turn, so he can draw other two cards. And yeah, then he has so... free access for the Prime Monarch. Still, uh, really good because he had the Prime Monarch to this. Oh, and wow. he top decks uh, the Vanity's Fiend. Uh, we were just about wow. to say how the Majesty has not been impactful, but the Clutch top deck. So he believes in the art of the cards uh, by adding the Pantheism instead of something like Stormforth or the March. And he gets rewarded, so once again, Vanity's Fiend uh, is there. But is there gonna be an impermanence uh, this time? Uh, uh, this is absolutely incredible stuff uh, from Steven. Yeah, at this point, Shatterspieler really needs to have an impermanence in his hand, because otherwise, in the next turn, we could also see a Majestic Fiend being played by Lithium. So, Shatterspieler is in trouble, not only because there's the Vanity Fiend, but also because of the Dominic Monarch. Wow. Yeah, and uh, we, we saw that in the side decks, uh, uh, he has Pancrotops, uh, Kaijus, uh, and all of those are a really good option against Majesty, but they are all shut down by Vanity's Fiend, so this top deck is absolutely 100% the best card he could have drawn, and it might uh, send him uh, flying to the finals again. Let's see what Schattenspira is trying to uh, accomplish here. So it seems like uh, Schattenspira has, has some options, Okay. okay, gonna start things off with uh, Cow Space. Once again, very powerful card. Not so much when you're facing down Vanity's Fiend, though. He maybe really needs to, to get something good out of his deck at this point. Because maybe he just wants to survive. Because uh, uh, if he doesn't have any impermanence, uh, I don't really know how we can uh, get out of this, honestly. Yeah, uh, Impermanence, one of the few outs uh, in his uh, deck, uh, even after siding. Uh, um, he does not uh, play Lightning Storm. We saw in the last round how Ryan uh, was able to capitalize uh, with that card, uh, just because it has a double nature. Not only does it act as a Feather Duster, but you can use it uh, in situations like this uh, to destroy uh, a Fiend. Uh, he has the Legion here, which is not that relevant in this moment. Maybe he just wants to get through his deck so that he can uh, draw an impermanence later on. Yeah, Looks but like uh, bad stuff here. Shot and Speeder, unfortunately, unable to out the Vanities. And from here on, it's only gonna get worse, because just like we saw last game, Lithium is now able to banish the Pantheism and get to the Monarch uh, uh, March. So once you get the March of the Monarchs down, you know that the impermanence is not an option anymore, and... Uh, that limits so much the, the outs uh, from your opponent. Yeah, because now Lithium has free access to his Pantheism. 
you can search for the March or the Tenacity if you want to. And then he has also the Majesty's Fiend. So let's see if he can uh, put up also the other Fiend. Yeah. And that could uh, actually seal the game. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely looking like uh, uh, outside of all... Uh, uh, everyone was expecting. Uh, Lithium is really putting up a good fight right now in the driver's seat uh, to advance to the finals. Uh, here, as we're gonna show you guys, uh, the card is uh, looking forward to add uh, is the March of the Monarchs with Protex from, yeah, just as predicted. Uh, that's what he's trying to get. He wants to protect his fiends uh, from uh, uh, targeting or disruption. And, uh, wow, I'm scared. Uh, I might think that your pick uh, is actually gonna lose here. Yeah, looks like, uh, unfortunately, Schattenspieler uh, doesn't have the answer to Lidius Vanityspien, but we have seen all the players facing Vanityspien losing, and uh, yeah. now we understand why. For now, Vanityspien has been uh, probably one of the cards with the highest win rate on stream. Uh, uh, Foolish Burial, uh, to top it all, uh, helps you send uh, even uh, another resource. As you can see, Lithium can send the idea, potentially getting back a Stormforth and just going for Stormforth Majesty. And with Majesty, Vanity and the March on the field, uh, uh, that's uh, a board that, honestly, I would wake up uh, screaming in the middle of the night. So You can see how powerful still this deck is in 2020, guys. I mean, it's actually... Destroying every single opponent with the Vanity Sphere, and uh, I think we will soon see in, uh, the Majestic Sphere, Majesty Sphere as well. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, let's see if maybe Steven has any other options in his end, but uh, I think uh, his pick will be the Majesty Sphere, so that uh, he has both of them on the field. Yeah, the, that's definitely the goal, but. I think that you, you are super happy, just like in game one, even with Vanity and March alone. Uh, if uh, he took a look at the stream yesterday, he knew that Schattenspieler is mainly playing uh, just the impermanence as an out. So, uh, definitely happy about that. We could see Majesty coming down. Uh, and uh, I do like this. Uh, uh, he knows that the set uh, monster is not going to be an issue. So he's like, why should I just use the Stormforth now? I can keep it in my hand in case something goes wrong. And uh, wow, this is uh, absolutely incredible from uh, Lithium. Yeah, he's just going to preserve the Stormforth just in case, you know? You can never know. Even a face down card, uh, uh, it's the field. Potentially the Stormforth, uh, uh, even though it's not that usable if you don't have the header in your hand. But now. Is Schattenspieler gonna be able to top deck a way out of this situation? Or is it gonna be Lithium advancing to the finals? We're gonna find out soon. I can't really see a way how Schattenspieler can deal with all these things. I mean, there's the domain. Yep. Wow. Again, uh, just setting a monster potentially to his face down is counting. Uh, just trying to, to think what yeah. he does. But yeah, I think uh, he has seen enough. Uh, so there is a fist pump uh, going from Schattenspieler. The king has lost his crown. Uh, Lithium advances to the final with a 2-1 score. Incredible show. We can just go back to us for the post-match discussion.